Oh yeah. That's good. Audio is now live, so. I'm not telling a Christian the other stuff like Christian the other day that it gets disturbed if you say like you're you nervous, you don't say you're nervous, you say you're concerned. I'm paying close attention. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned about when I'm going for promotion. <laughs> I know it's terrible. So like, you know, I was supposed to, you know, I was supposed to get my second degree, you know, See? a week before. And then whatever, I don't care. I don't care about a strike, but like I had, I had like four of my friends who were going through the black belt, like literally the week after quarantine, that's like nice. started. They were supposed to go play black belt jujitsu. That's and it's like that's brutal. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll start up in about a minute and a half. See a nice big group is here. Thank you for joining us. Everyone at home can kind of warm up a little bit on their own, but uh, oh yeah, look, nice big group. Oh, well, see Andrew. I don't know if I've seen you in one of them recently. Nice to see you are here. We've got Jonah and Ari and Brent as well, and we've got hold on, let me scroll back. Matthew and Alex and Senpai Tan and Sensei Allen and Theodore, Astrid and Kyle, Senpai Hannah. Nice big group. Cool. So we'll start with Matt. Just let the last stragglers come on in. Oh. Jake Gino's here. I'm going to move the camera and get us going. And Baptiste is here now too. You guys can line up. You guys out here, go ahead. Come on up. Second and third spots. Yeah, let me just see if everything looks frame great. Gnome's here too. Great. Yeah, we got like 20 people. And everyone at home, stand up, stand straight, and shin zen bow. Nice. Bow shaky shin. Nice. Courtesy here. 
Oasis. Set by Adri. Oasis. Set by Christian. Oasis. Good. Heels together. Hands together. Mock so. Take a few deep breaths. Mock so in. And gnar. One last time. Shins and mouth. So there's two guys here. Take one big step forward. Turn around. And move around. Shadow box. Go. Those at home, same thing. While you're shadow boxing, while you're moving around, take a moment just to look at your environment. Make sure you have plenty of space. Make sure that the chances that you're going to knock something over or run into something is pretty small. Uh, Leland is here too. Good to see you guys. people at home today, and in particular the kids that are in class, because we're, we're about 50-50 uh, kids and adults, I'm going to ask that you at home try your best to be in the class the whole time. And so what I mean is, especially when you're at home, one of the reasons that it's nice to have a place to train is that when you're there, you feel like you're there. When you're at home, you feel like you're you at home. You guys are at home. I want you instead at home, just like throw yourself into the TV or the laptop or the iPad or whatever it is that you're looking at. Be here. And so while we're doing our punches and we're doing our basics, we're doing everything else, your mind can wander, it gets distracted by things around the room a little bit. Try to avoid that. Try to just be in the practice the whole time. And you will fail. You will slip and slide out of it. It's fine. When you do, bring yourself back. And Yame, stretch out on your own. 30 seconds. So now at home, go ahead and go through a few stretches. Don't neglect your upper body, upper body and lower body. And now also try to bring your breathing back to a baseline. I mentioned a lot the idea of not controlling your breath, just letting your breath do what it needs to do to get the air you need it to do. That's often the case, but not always. Sometimes allow yourself to settle back down so when we start going for real, you're kind of starting from a nice base. And let's stand up. Yoy. Right leg forward into right San Shindachi. Kamaite. Good. So let's remember, hopefully you guys can see me at this angle. We want to have one foot, one step in front of the other. Not a full step length, but the toes on the back foot are lined up with the heel on the front foot. This position is called our Kuzure Heiko Dachi, our uneven but parallel stance. We turn it into San Shin by simply turning our toes in a little, bending our knees. Our legs should feel strong. They should feel engaged. Both fists out, right fist pull back to the stomach, slow and strong with a deep breath. Itch. Knee. Sun, both wrists should turn over at the end of the motion. Chi. Go. Rook. We're now punching fast. Itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go, rook, sitch, hatch, coo, go. Yeah. Bring it up to the face. Slow and strong. Itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Punching fast. Itch. Knee. Sun, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, ku, jo. Yeah. Bring the punch down low. Last set of slow punches. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Full speed. Itch, ni, sun, chi, go, rook, sitch, hatch, 
Coop. Joe. Yeah. Sanbon Suki. Jodan, Chudan, Gaydon. Up, middle, down. So we're going to do 10 of them, and then we're going to do 10 more with Kiai. I want the first set of 10 to be building up from slow to full speed. So the first one should be slow motion, like you're just practicing the motion. The 10th one where you Kiai should be full speed, and then all 10 of the Kiai ones should be exerting. Ready? Itch. Nice and slow. Ni. Just a little faster. Sun. Chi. Go. Ru. Sitch. Hatch. Go. Go. Yeah. Ten more times with loud key on each one. Sitch. Yeah. Ni. Yeah. Sun. Yeah. Chi. Yeah. Go. Everyone bring both fists out to stomach height. Morote Chudan Suki. We're pulling back with both fists. We're extending. Whenever we pull back, you should feel it open up your chest, open up your shoulders. Whenever we punch out, you should feel it open up your back and open up the backs of your shoulders. So when we pull back, open up. When we punch out, open up the back. And use this, especially the first few, as an opportunity to open up your chest and get yourselves warmed up even more. Ready? Itch. Pull back and out. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Jo. Yeah. Bring it up to the face. Nice. And now I'm going to have these two guys do it. And you guys do it at home as well. Go a little higher than the face. Go up nice. above your head. So we really get into the tops of those shoulders. If even bringing your arms up here starts making your shoulders ache, yeah, we need to get a little more flexibility. Itch. That's a flexibility thing, not a strength thing. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Ru. Sitch. Hatch. Ku. Jo. Yeah. Very good. Bring it down low. And again, more towards the floor. Don't tip forward. Punching straight down. Elbows should come back and up on each count. Itch. Yes. Knee. Sun. Chi. Go. Ru. Sitch, hatch, go, go. Yeah. Very nice. Right leg's gonna pull back. Nare. Good. Down in your stomach push up position. 30 seconds. Any style you'd like of push up, begin. You're seeing the two seniors here do the most advanced version of this. They're doing their push ups on their feet and on their hands, and in both cases, they're on their knuckles. I do not want anyone doing knuckle push ups, kid or adult where you're risking injuring your hands, right? You work up to this. If you wanna do this from your knees, do that. If you wanna do open hand push-ups from your feet, do that. But do not injure yourself because you wanna to get to the fastest rate of it too soon. And down. Onto your back and crunches or any other abdominal exercise. So I know for myself, one of the pitfalls whenever I'm learning something new is, you know, your instinct is to go look at the masters of whatever the thing is. You know, art or uh, physical practice or sport or whatever. And you look at that end result and that end result is so cool. All the way down. Oof. Stretch out on your own Oof. while you're stretching. And so you see that end result of like someone at a really high level. And so, although you know you're not gonna be as good as that master, you wanna emulate the little things you see them doing. And the pitfall there is that you're kind of emulating the end result but you're not emulating the process to get there. So you see these guys doing these push-ups on the first two knuckles, everything is perfect, and you're like, that's where I want to get to. You know you're not there yet, but you want to copy it. So you do a lousy version of the same thing, opposed to a good version on your palms, a good version on your knees. Build yourself up until you can get to doing that legitimately. And that is the way you want to be looking at kind of mastery of anything, is don't, don't emulate their end result, emulate their process. And if you don't know their process, ask them. Ask us, ask anyone who's walked the path before you. Okay, let's stand up. So one of the things that we're gonna to do today is work on a few of our strikes that involve different parts of our hands and, and, uh, and, and arms, not, not gonna be legs as much, but different parts of our hand and how you would use them both traditionally and how you use them more modern. 
So first thing we're going to look at is a different part of the fist. So normally you hit with the first two knuckles. This is called seiken. If you don't know that term, say it at home. Seiken. It means the front of the knuckles. We sometimes will also use in traditional karate the back of the knuckles, the yuraken, meaning the back of the fist, um, for a back fist strike. It's a little less valuable for like a free fighting or a self-defense application. It would be the back of the knuckles. And then we have a few other ones. We've got the knife edge, which is called shuto. And again, repeat any of these Japanese words if you need to at home. The shuto is the knife edge. If we make a tight fist and we hit with that same area, it's called a hammer fist. And that is, uh, the Japanese term is tetsui. Tetsui, a hammer fist strike, is a legitimate, uh, powerful technique. You'll see it in MMA sometimes. When someone is on top of someone else where a punch, a wound up punch doesn't make as much sense, a hammer fist can make a lot of sense. It also, especially for like a self-defense application, although your knuckles are stronger, they also are more breakable than the bottom of your hand. And so if you were in a position where you had to strike to somebody's head, Hitting someone in the skull with knuckles is a very good chance to break your hand. A hammer fist is perfectly reasonable. There's a reason that, you know, monkeys and apes hit with that hammer fist. They don't have the thumb to lock the fist down as tight. So they hit with those. It's a valuable technique. So let's explore a little bit. You are. Right leg back, kibadachi, gate on barai. So you'll end up body facing the front door, left hand, gate on barai. Kamaite. Yeah. Very good. We're gonna step in Junsuki side punch, but the point is not the punch. The point is gonna be the hammer fist afterwards. So for those of you at home also, if you don't have as much room to work with, you're simply gonna be doing the same motion in one spot. Notice how I can step back, step forward, and I can just stay in one spot and practice this technique. That's what you're doing. But again, our focus here, you're gonna step in and punch, but it's going to be then on the hammer fist strike. On the hammer fist strike. This one is called Tetsui Uchi Uchi. So step in and punch, right away hammer fist. Ready, itch. Punch and hammer, good. Other side, knee. Punch and hammer, and a third one, sun. Yeah. When we turn around, we simply mate, we by moving our left hand into gate number I. If you're just working in one spot at home, don't worry about mate. Mate, itch, punch and hammer. Knee. Sun. Yeah. Mate. Good. Same thing, but now hammer fist behind you, hammer fist in front. Take all the time you need to get the form right. Itch. Behind you, and then in front of you. Hit that hammer fist. Knee. And sun. Yeah. Mate. Itch. Knee. Sun. Yeah. Mate. Very good. Right from where you are, convert this stance into Zen Kutsudachi. So Oops. just move your back leg over, bend your front knee, straighten your back knee. Okay. So now we're going to take some of our classic Shuto strikes. Every Shuto strike, with the exception of Shuto Sakotsu Uchi Kome, can be turned into a hammer fist strike. So Shuto Gamanuchi can easily become Tetsui Gamanuchi. Shuto Sakotsu Uchi can easily become Tetsui Sakotsu Uchi. Shuto Hiza Uchi, where you strike the body, can become Tetsui uh, Hiza Uchi, and actually quite potent, hitting something in the body with a hammer fist. Boom. Much of your knuckles don't really make sense unless you throw a hook. Um, and of course, you just got, you guys just did it. Shuto Uchi Uchi can be Tetsui Uchi Uchi. So, what we're gonna do is take those strikes. Again, the one we can't do is Shuto Sakotsu Uchi Kome, because this thing is just asking to break your wrist, um, because curling the fingers down compromises the wrist here. So, we're gonna take that one out. So, let's all do this together. Everybody step in Shuto Gaman Uchi. Go. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Tetsui Gamanuchi, go, yeah. So tight fist, bam, okay. Right from where you are, other hand, Tetsui Sakotsu Uchi, go. So strike to the collarbone, perfectly legitimate strike. If you blast someone in the collarbone with a tight fist like this, it's gonna cause damage. Because we can't do the straight one, other hand does the same thing again, Sakotsu Uchi, go. Same hand again, boom. Now, other hand, left hand in this, these guys' case, strikes to the body, Tetsui Hiza Uchi, go. Boom. And now reach across with your right hand. Tetsui Uchi Uchi. Go. Very good. So I'm specifically here going to talk to Ari Jonah and Brent back there. If this is, Brent, if this is like your, literally your very first karate class ever, this is a hard combination. So yeah, well, I can't see you though, so I'm going to assume you're doing it perfectly. Okay. Stepping in Tetsui uh, Gamanuchi. Ready? Itch. Sakotsu Uchi. Go. Sakotsu Uchi. Go. Same one twice. Hiza Uchi. Go. Uchi Uchi. Go. Boom, very nice. Third set, same one. If you're struggling with this a little bit, do the first three moves. Go to the head and then twice to the collarbone. Sun, head strike, collarbone, collarbone, 
Body, inside head. When you turn, left hand starts through the whole thing. Mate. One, two, three, four, five. Take your time if you need it. Itch. Me. Good. Yeah. Stay mindful. It's a little bit different. A little is enough to mess you up. Sun. Yeah. Very nice. Same thing. Mate. Very good. Very good. Back leg comes forward. Nare. Very good. Shake it out. So, not going down to the floor yet. We're now going to move on to our traditional elbow strikes. So we're going to do traditional elbow strikes, and then we're going to do modern like self-defense or free fighting elbow strikes. Something interesting about elbow strikes that isn't inherent in the technique. So every other part of the hand, part of the fist, part of the leg, whatever, it has its own unique name, right? So there's Seiken is the knuckles, Yuraken is the back of the knuckles, Tetsui, Shuto, etc. Elbow, there's only one word, Iji. Iji means your elbow strike, right? But the thing is, your elbow actually has multiple striking surfaces. When we're doing any strike around or up, what we're striking with is the last couple of inches right here at the end, but it's really the front of your elbow. Um, anyone in the class who's like above a uh, green belt, peen on four and further, and we always talk about when you turn and strike your elbow, I always give the kids a hard time about not like slapping the top of their, they think it's about, that's not the point. This is what I'm hitting, and I'm hitting it with that edge of the, of the elbow. And so that's the point. This, hopefully you guys can see it framed well, this is the striking surface, but it's not the only one. The other is the very point of the elbow, the sharp end. This is gonna be a brutal part to get hit with. And this would be any time we do an elbow sideways or behind us or down, we're striking with that point right there. If you see someone do like a breaking competition on like ESPN 7 at four o'clock in the morning, um, it'll be often you'll see them break the biggest things with that spot of the elbow. It's incredibly structurally sound. It is really close to your funny bone and it's not impossible that like you tweak that spot, but it is an inch or two over. So that's what we're hitting with there. So keep this in mind. You have two different weapons. They both have the same EG, but they're entirely different. One's here in the front, one's here on the bottom. So let's keep this in mind as we do some of our basic elbow strikes. Right leg back, Zen Kutsudachi, Gate Number I, Kamaite. Yep. Yep. Good. Left elbow up, eg mawashi ate. So this is hitting with the blade of the elbow, that edge that's going towards the wrist. Step forward and strike across. Itch. Boom. Again, still just one strike. Knee. And sun. Yep. Good. So both of you here back up just a tiny bit, just for the camera. Okay. Watch how we mate for anyone in the room who's not clear. Don't do anything with your upper body. Everyone move your back foot behind your front foot. Go. Yes. Now twist and point the elbow that's already out all the way around. Right. So you're twisted. You should feel like you're torqued up. And now big left elbow. Go. Yeah. So generating power on that elbow is difficult if you let your body relax. Don't. Keep it torqued and then fire. Step in. Itch. Nate. You guys can slide back a little because I know I took away some space. Sun. Yeah. Very good. Mate. Very good. Okay, so now we're gonna step in and add to this an upper strike. So you guys step in, go ahead, Iji Mawashi, go. Very good. And now rising elbow with your left hand, go. This is called Iji Age. We're still hitting with the same surface, the blade. We're gonna get to the point of the elbow in a second. And now just to end up on the correct hand, do another Iji Mawashi Ate after that, go. Right, so we're gonna go across, up, across. Ni, across, up, across. One more. Sun. Yeah. Mate. Itch. Good. And again, if at home this is too fast for you, just slow down. Do your own pace. If you do one rep out of the three, you're on your way. Knee. And sun. Very good. When you mate, so let's do this together again. Left foot moves across, go. Right elbow swings all the way around. We're loaded up and go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so we're gonna do something a little different even for black belts in the room. This combination is gonna be slightly different. I've never loved the whole firing the elbow up to the side. So 
here's a, something I consider a misnomer between the way that I understand some elements of karate and is kind of the traditionally understood way. Um, side techniques, yoko techniques, yoko giddy side kick, yoko elbow. To, the point is not that you're firing it off to the side, like you've got a bad guy on the side of you. The point is that it fires off the side of your body. So the person can be in front of you, but I'm slightly sideways, and so that side elbow makes sense. So we're going to do the side elbow, but not off to the side like many of you are used to. You're going to go Iji Mawashi, Iji Age, Iji Mawashi. We're in Zen Kutsunachi, right? What we're going to simply do is change your stance into Kibadachi and side strike straight ahead. So across, up, across, wind up the stance, and Iji Yoko Ate straight ahead. Let's do it together. Ready? Itch. Mawashi. Age. Mawashi. And now let your weight come back to your back leg a little bit and drive into Kibidachi straight to the side. Exactly. Okay. When I count, so you're going to step in again, just orient your front foot forward again to step forward again. Knee. And across. Up. Across. Load up. Drive into the side. Exactly. So this also gives you the kind of traditional practice of shifting stances mid combination. And sun. Across, up, across, and drive. Yeah. Very good. When we're going to mate here, we're going to start with our left hand so we get a full rep in. And mate, left arm across, up, across, drive. Very good. Itch. On your own. If you need to follow the seniors here, do so. Knee. And sun. Yeah. Very good. Same thing starting with your left arm. Mate. Okay. We're going to add one more to the back of this. Also going to be a little different for experienced students. So we finish with our Eiji Yoko Ate here. So Eiji Oroshi is our dropping downward elbow strike. That one again I was talking about. The breaking contest on ESPN the Ocho. Right? So the idea is that from here... If I try to drop this elbow down, I have no, the rest of my body is not involved at all. So even if I center up, I do everything there, like this elbow is not gonna have anything on it. The other elbow, due to the fact that my body can twist, it's gonna have something on it. So we're gonna go EG Yoko Ate. That's how we finish the last combination. Now watch. We're gonna chamber our right hand, step over a little, up, drop. This is a complicated motion. I'm asking you guys to do a lot. So we drive in sideways. You're going to chamber your other hand, step out, back to that Zenzu Tsubachi, basically. Up, drop. Allow your knees to bend, you can come out of a traditional stance here. You'll then step in and start again with whatever leg and hand match. So, meant to be a little complicated, stay with me. If you're brand new, sorry. Not really, but whatever. Okay, stepping in. Itch. Now up, knee, across. Okay, side strike. Yup, and now wait for me here. Chamber your left hand. Load your weight up and over the top left elbow. Boom, very nice. Okay, we're gonna step in left hand strike. Knee, so reload your left hand. Across, up, across, side, and load up your right elbow, drop. Yep, you got it, yeah, sorry for cutting you off. Okay, right hand starts through the whole thing. And go, across, up, across, side, load it up and drop, very nice. Mate. Left elbow across, right elbow up, left elbow across, left elbow sideways, load up, boom, good. So for the seniors at home, we've got a number of black belts in the room who are doing this. It is harder that this combination is similar to an elbow combination, but not the one you actually do. Clear your mind of the old elbow combination. I'm not saying we won't do that one sometimes, of course we will, but if you let that one bog this one down, then you're just gonna lose ground on it. Don't, let go of the last one. Let's do it again. Itch, right hand across. Left hand up, right hand across, right arm side, left arm drop. Yes. Let that back knee bend, guys. You can bring the heel off the ground. Oh, yes. Yeah. Knee, left, right, left, left, reach over, right. Very good. Yep. And sun. Yep, yep. Last one, mate. And back leg comes forward. No, all right. Good. Down in your stomach, push up position. 30 seconds, any style you'd like, begin. Go. So you see some Christian modified by simply going to the outside position, like sometimes we'll call the bench press style push up because your fists are lined up like you're holding onto a bar. Um, we can go wider, we can go open hands, we can go fingertips. You have all kinds of options to mix it up. The number one reason that we do the mix up 
is to make it more fun. <laughs> That's it. Like the more fun you have doing basic exercises, the more you'll want to do them. The more boring and repetitive and rote an exercise is, the less you're going to want to do it. And down, onto your back. 30 <laughs> seconds, I need to start your bike from here. We're going to move on, last thing we do before we go on to like some kata and things, into elbow strikes in a more free fighting uh, situation. So the main distinction between something that works in traditional karate and what would work for self-defense or for sparring is whether defense is built into it. So our offensive techniques in traditional karate do not care about defense at all. Like this is the worst defensive position I could possibly be in. Modern techniques have defense and offense together. All the way down, stretch out 30 seconds. So elbows are somewhat unique in their ability to allow you to be very defensive, yet still able to strike. I even can throw elbow strikes without making full fists with my hands and I'll be okay. And so I can be in a position where I'm like pacifying. I'm like, no, we, I'm not interested in any kind of confrontation. And we're just a moment away from being able to throw elbow strikes, be able to throw punches from a defensive position, right? I don't want to be here going like, no, I'm not interested in, in fighting. No, none of this, right? I'm too far away from defense. I want to be able to go, no, 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 no. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. And if I have to throw, I can throw. Now we're not trying to trick someone into thinking we weren't going to fight and beat them up. But if I have to, I can, but I can also just protect myself. So let's stand on up, guys. Oops. The idea, again, is I want you to think of these edges. I want you to think of the edge of the elbow as a weapon. Think of it like a knife that you're trying to cut something with, or if you want to think something less like aggressive than that, you can as well. But I want you to think of the spot. If you think of it as this, this kind of large arm motion, it won't be precise enough. Think about the small spot you're hitting with. Right like back, picking up a fighting stance. Come on, Tech. So let's just start, go ahead, move around. Let's just start with a very classic moving around and fighting stance. And now let's change it into something a little more like self defense -y. So open up your hands. Let's open up your hands. You can stop moving so much, but we want to have the kind of balance still able to be even. One foot is still, our body is still a little bit bladed. And this is kind of a defensive posture that is still good for us, but is not far from our fighting position. I can push off that back foot. I do whatever I want. From here, we're going to center our shoulders. Everyone square up a little bit. Use that to be able to wind up a front EG Mawashi, ripping across, right? If you do it right, you don't have to make fists. You can, it might be a little stronger, but only a tiny bit. Swinging this across should work by itself. Square up, twist back. Let's do this on the count. Ichi Mawashi off the front hand. Itch, square up, and try. Very nice, yeah, very strong, guys. Me, very good, yep. Sun, Chi, go, rup, sitch. Hunch, go, do, yeah. very good. Everyone switch your feet, right leg in front. And we're still doing the front hand, front hand. Square your shoulders to give you a little wind up, right elbow across, ready, itch, very nice. Knee, sun, chi, very good. Go, notice how their feet are turning. Notice how their heels are turning. Rup. That is where the power is actually coming from. It's not coming from their arms. Sitch. Hatch. Good. Cool. So let's not, both the guys here and there at home, don't wind up, just square up. Wow. So you face square, it doesn't give it away. If you lean too far back with the striking shoulder, they think something's coming. Their gut will go, oh, careful on that side. And go. That's cleaner. Do. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so now switch your feet back. We're gonna work on what would be the equivalent of a, of, a, of a right cross, but with elbows. This elbow doesn't actually exist in our traditional elbows. This isn't one of them. This one is we're coming across. The point of impact, our arms should be straight up and down. So the idea from here is that we're striking with this spot. If this is very difficult for your shoulders, a lot of tension, it's okay. We're actually doing an exercise at the end of class that I got from a yoga teacher that I watch online. Um, that's gonna be fun to loosen up your shoulder. But if, so if this is a lot to get your elbow over your shoulder like that, we'll work on it later. You can go a little bit more sideways, but uh, that's the idea. Our idea is to confront their face with this straight on, straight on. And again, if you have some trouble, you can hit it straight on from here, coming off our back arm. So right arm, elbow strikes straight ahead. We can call this like an elbow cross. Ready, itch, boom, yes. Knee, sun, chi. Go. Rup. Sitch. Hatch. Kup. Jump. Yeah. Sweet.
Switch your feet. Let's Left switch. elbow. Ready? Itch. Knee. Sun. Chi. If you can go over the top, go over the top. Go. If your shoulder doesn't let you, we'll fix it. Root. Sitch. Hatch. Two. Jump. Yeah. Very nice. Nare. Front leg pulls back. I was going to do the application of the down elbow, but let's get some katas in. You got something else? Maybe we'll look at that next time. Also, so the down elbow really only makes sense. The one of the spots makes sense. I won't actually do it because like social distancing protocols here. But like, but like if someone were to shoot in on a tackle on you, right? Um, you'll hear a lot of traditional martial artists say, oh, you know, if anyone shot like a double leg on me, I would just hit them with a knee kick or I'd drop an elbow onto their back. Um, neither one of those are going to work really if you've got a very good wrestler. <laughs> if someone who actually knows what they're doing shoots for your legs, you can hit them all you want because your legs are going to be in the air by the time you throw it. It's never going to happen. But in a self-defense situation, it is very common that when someone gets hit at some point, they panic and just kind of grab at you. That would be a spot where this down elbow would work. It's very brutal. Like what you're basically saying is, I'm going to just take this elbow and slam into the weak spot of the back of the head or into the spine. Um, yeah, maybe not kind of ethically the greatest option. I know I'm just going to turn this person into a quadriplegic because they mess with you in a bar. Probably not the greatest uh, ethic ever, but it is a vi viable technique. Not on an uh, NCAA wrestler. They're just going to take you for a ride. But uh, it would work in a self-defense situation. Maybe we'll look at that next time. Let's move on to some kata. Uh, let's go, as we've been doing, Senpai Adri, go in front of the column, Push. facing the front door, and take a big step back, almost Push. to the gray. Yep, you're fine. You're entirely in frame. Good. And, yoi. Let's skip Taikyoka number one, because we've done it a bunch. Pinan Kata number one. Push. So anyone that's brand new, any white belts in the room, this Kata is almost identical to Taikyoka number one, the first Kata that you do, with a couple of extra pieces. Ready? Itch. Lower block to left. So you should be going to your left. I'm giving you these two guys at this angle so that you can kind of see the kata from both angles. Hopefully it'll work out when we get to the eighth move. We'll see if they pass each other or not. Neat. So when you guys go to the get up, I freeze there. Sun. So now we're actually going to do a technique we did earlier in class, our Tetsui Gamen Uchi. Go. So this is still the third move. Go ahead. You can finish the technique. Yep. And we're striking to the head with the hammer fist. Step in and punch. Cheat. Down the middle, go. So let's actually make it so Christian go a little forward and Adri a lot to your right. So you'll actually just go behind him. Yep. We're stepping forward, upper blocks. Go. Sitch. Mm -hmm. Hatch, ki Yeah. Back leg turns. You can either follow some by Adri as a mirror image or if you know it on your own, you're good. Cool. Yeah. Two. Front leg turn, itch, knee, back up the middle, sun, cheat, go, yeah. back leg turns into back stance, just do that part, sitch, just turn to back stance, so here we are, now our hands are going to do this circular motion, shuto mawashi yuke, go, all one count, I'm just breaking it down for the people that don't know it, step it on the diagonal, hatch, Turn. Coop. Jump. Yeah. Good. No, all right. Come back. Good. Shake it up. What's this? Yoi. Kenshi Kai Kata number one. What's Ready. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Get on right. Go. Double punch down. Rup. Again, just like earlier in class. Move forward. Christian. Yeah, just, and all these just plan on going behind. Sitch. Hatch. Yeah. Stepping back. We're not turning. We're retreating. Coop. Outside block. Juke. Lower block. Itch. To the left. Upper block. Reverse punch. Knee. Step in, face punch, stomach punch. Sun. Turn. Chi. Go. One, two, ki. Yeah. No. All right. Very good.
Adjust a little bit. And mock so. San chin kata. Yoi. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Go. We're turning. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. Choo. Each knee, sun, cheek, big shoot, o n k u k, go, rook, very good, gnar. Good. So now Christian, take one step forward and turn this way. And now take one step back. Perfect. Okay. So now, you know, I often give you the option to do any kata you'd like, and you still have that option. But today what we're going to do, because we kind of skipped over these at other classes recently, we're going to specifically do Pinon 3 and Pinon 4. So Senpai Christian, Pinon kata number 3. Senpai Adri, Pinon kata number 4. So technically this is an advanced yellow belt kata with Pinon 3 and in a green belt kata with pinon four, you can do either one you'd like, or any kata you want to practice at home. Yoi. Itch. Ni. If you're copying this kata and it's way above your rank, don't stress about not knowing it. Mimic what you see as best you can. I'll count slow. Chi. Chi. Go. Ro. There you go. Kick Adri. And there's that elbow strike I was talking about from earlier in class. E.G. Mawashi into the hand. Sitch. Hatch. Coop. Jump. Yeah, yeah. Very good. We're turning. Itch. Ni. Sun. Chi. Senpai you can back up a little bit so you have plenty of room to go forward. Go. Rook. Sitch. Hatch. And now Chris, yeah, perfect. Oh, that's for Adji, or those doing peen on four. And Joe, people doing peen on three. Yeah. Very good. Alright. Okay, shake it out. So we're gonna do one last set of on the ground, uh, you know, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. If you are wearing your gi or you have a belt nearby, you're just gonna do the 30, 30, 30. If you are at home and you didn't do full gi, you're just doing regular clothes. I need you to go get either a belt or anything else, any rope, anything that would work in the same way. I need you to have a belt of some kind for what we do after this. Down in your stomach 30 seconds. What? Any style of push-up that you'd like. So again, if you have your belt, you'll just use that. But anything else, anything, it doesn't have to be exactly like a belt at all. We're gonna do an exercise for our shoulders to finish class out, just because I saw some tightness of these two guys. And also it's just a cool exercise that everyone could use. And we'll do that in a moment once we're done. We suddenly see like the number of people in class plummet from 20 down to like four. It's like, we're out. Nope, not doing anything for my shoulders. And down onto your back, 30 seconds. Any abdominal exercise.
Hand down, stretch out on your own. 30 seconds. So I've mentioned this before, but we have a nice big group and I'll mention it again. You know, one of the downsides of a karate practice or a striking practice in general, this actually applies to a lot of things, um, is that in karate with the punches and the strikes and all of it, push-ups, etc., everything in karate is a push. Because you don't actually make any contact with anybody else, there's no pulling motions. And like most of the musculature in the body, there's a pulling muscle on the other side of a pushing muscle, right? Bicep and tricep. And so we tend to get really well developed in our pushing muscles and a lot less developed in our pulling muscles and that makes us unbalanced. And so you'll end up getting tightness and, 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 and you know, a lot of uh, martial artists or karate practitioners get a really tight front which starts curling things forward like your shoulders roll forward and we don't get that good posture, that open chest because our back muscles just don't have quite the, the oomph in them from not getting enough pulling. So everybody, stand on up. You guys face the camera. I could take my belt off, but I could also just use one of the other black belts I have. <laughs> I got so many of them, I can just pick and choose anyone I want. Pull out like a red belt and start doing that. Okay, go ahead. You guys take out your belt. Let's... Okay. And so what we're simply going to do is rip it at two spots. If you want to get like super fancy, you can wrap it around so that like you can't undo it and then go ahead like here. Mm -hmm. And then get it. Now how far you go, well, that's going to depend on your shoulder flexibility. Because the motion we're going to do is quite simple. We're just going to take both hands and come all the way up to our shoulders and then all the way behind with a small bend in our elbows, right? Yeah, so that's what I thought, Adley. Yeah. So you can get your hands way closer together. Uh-huh. Yeah, Christian probably can do it like with his hands almost touching. Add your bad signature. Yeah. Oh, ooh, I can see it. But like, no, no, go one side and the other. Straight up, right, until it goes over. Yeah, yeah, no joke, right? And now all we're gonna do from here is slight motions left and right. Really small, really controlled. And if you do it right, you're gonna feel it in the shoulder. If you've got a mirror to look in, Go ahead, do that, and just look for symmetry. Go ahead, you guys can turn face the mirror. And just make sure, you know, it's a lot easier if you got, see, and if you got one yeah. shoulder a lot tight, it's a lot easier to go one. Don't do that, right? Behind your head, yeah. That's a lot of years of karate and a lot of years of jiu-jitsu also. Yeah, open up those shoulders. Very nice. Yes. I keep a... Telling you guys about it because I've been really enjoying it myself and I think it's fantastic. Um, but a yoga for BJJ guy who does a lot of this kind of stuff, you know, he uses your belt and uses, you know, typical jujitsu and a lot of it obviously overlaps to karate. Um, you know, the equipment that we've got and motions and it's a lot of the same problems. Yeah. And bring it down, shake out your arms. Yeah. Well, it's like you break it into like three sets. It's yeah. <laughs> totally weak. But okay, go ahead. You can put your belts back on. Nice, yeah. And then we'll line up. Hey, everybody, shins and bow. Place. Down here. Place. Step by Adri. Step by Christian. Feet together, hands together, moxa. Now, last moment while we're in this stance, try to engage your back and get a little more posture. Imagine you want to be two inches taller than you are. Everyone I know would love to be six foot five. Superman and Batman are both six foot five. It'd be awesome. Get a little bit closer. So then they, no, one last time, shins and bow. So just reiterate one last time, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, roadblocks, speed bumps, however you want to look at it, in getting better at anything is this getting enamored with the final goal, the final product. I want it to look just like how the master does it. I want it to have it look just like the expert. You can, but you got to get there the way they got there. And I guarantee you none of them got there by looking at another expert before them and just trying to copy them directly. They saw an expert and they figured out the path they went on and they walked the same path. Or they walked their own path and got there on their own over time. Nobody, nobody in anything interesting just looked at somebody with 10 years of experience and just said, I'm gonna do that and just did it. 
Maybe they saw someone with 10 years experience and they were able to do it in five. They were able to modernize or make more efficient the process, but no one just does the end result. So let that go. Let go of trying to look like these guys throwing kicks, trying to look like some fourth degree black belt doing Tata, trying to do any of it, trying to draw like Jim Lee, the comic book artist. Like, no, look at the way they do it, learn some techniques, but follow their path. Shinzen Thank you guys. Thank you at home. Have a good rest of your day. See you guys later. Bye.